just about ready to go here on the men's side. As the number one ranked William Penn Statesman look for win number 22 on the year. And what would be their 11th win in a row here tonight. They take on a Mount Mercy team that is 15 and 8 overall. Coming into action tonight when winners of their last two, winners of five of their last eight. William Penn, of course, coming off of a thrilling 85-84 win on Saturday down in Springfield against a very good Evangel team. A game that William Penn led big early, but Evangel came back and actually led by four late in that ball game. But William Penn, after a couple of missed free throws, got a shot from Malik Thomas with a second and a half to play to win that one, 85 to 84. In that victory, they outshot Evangel 49 to 39 percent, but had to overcome 16 turnovers in that ball game. Kavion Blaylock, the now two-time, repeat, reigning conference player of the week. Led the way with 27 points. Kamari Newman chipped in with 20. He was hot early from the outside in that ball game against Evangel. And, of course, Malik Thomas had the game winner in that game on Saturday. Mount Mercy, they're coming off of a 67-64 win over Missouri Valley on Saturday. A game in which they outshot the Vikings 38 to 32 percent. They also made five more three-pointers and had a 49-42 advantage on the glass. Roy Sean Webb, one of three players in double figures in that victory, he led the way with 16 points for the Mustangs. They said, like I said earlier, they've won five of their last eight, including two in a row, William Penn, winners of their last ten. A big week last week. You know, it started out by them becoming the new number one in the rankings, and then they followed it up with a road win down at Peru State on Wednesday night, and then followed that up with a thrilling 85-84 win down in Springfield on Saturday. So good to see William Penn back home after that road trip last week. As they look to continue their strong play. Again, their only loss was back on December 8th, a 79-73 defeat to Central Methodist. But since then, they have rattled off 10 straight. And they'll look to make it 11 here tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for this men's contest. First of all, for the visiting Mustangs, 15 and 8 overall, 8 and 5 in conference play. Coming into action tonight, they are in second place here in the North Division, trailing William Penn by four games. So as this regular season starts to wind down, an important game for Mount Mercy in the standing wise to cut the gap for that top spot in the North Division. Their starting five looks like this. Roy Sean Webb is a 6'2 senior from Cedar Rapids. He'll be joined by Tyler Kelly, a 6'4 senior from Manchester, Iowa. And Chris Giles is a 6'3 senior from Dallas, Texas. Ryan Bartley is a 6'5 freshman from Decatur, Illinois. And Bailey Basala a 6'5 senior from Moline, Illinois. Basala, the leading scorer on this team at just over 18 points a ball game. He also shoots 78% from the free throw line. Mount Mercy head coach is Aaron Jennings. Assistant coaches are Antoine Strong and Jacob Misner. Graduate assistant coaches Jacob Perks. Student assistant coaches are Wyatt Peterson, Olivia Vandersanden, and Bodie Haydenfeld. 
Those are the Mustangs. Here are your statesmen. 21 and 1 on the year, 12 and 1 in conference. And number one in the country. Their starting five looks like this. Chance Crusoe will start at the point position, the 6'1 sophomore from St. Louis, Missouri. He'll be joined in the backcourt by Q Cager, the 5'10 senior from Hopkinsville, Kentucky. The third guard in tonight's starting lineup, Kamari Newman, the 6'4 senior from Detroit, Michigan. Rayhan Cobb will start in the front court, the 6'8 junior from Atlanta, Georgia. And Kavion Blaylock is the 6'7 senior from Houston, Texas. The now back-to-back reigning conference player of the week as he has won that award the last two weeks for his performance just playing. You know, we shouldn't be surprised by what KV on Blaylock does, but has just been playing at an all-time level here the last couple of weeks. Mount Mercy in the road, Navy uniforms with gold lettering, gold numbers, and gold trim. William Penn in the home whites tonight. Navy letters, Navy numbers, Navy trim. William Penn, of course, coached by John Henry. Associate head coach is Blake Sandquist. Assistant coach Don Hickambottom. Graduate assistant coaches Jordan Helms, Wade Vontrebeck, Jay Canson. Volunteer assistant coach is Jalen Walker. It'll be Cobb and it'll be Bartley to jump it here tonight. And we are underway. William Penn wins the tap as Cobb controls it. Here's Cager. They run a lob to Blaylock. He was able to catch it but was in a bad position, unable to get the shot off. And William Penn, as that's saved, Cager inside has it, forces one up through contact and scores. And a whistle is fouled on Kelly. And Cage will be at the line for the end one opportunity. Cager rattles the free throw down. And William Penn scores first in this one. As William Penn got off to good starts in both of their games last week. And a turnover here to start. And William Penn after the turnover will come back the other way. Here's Crusoe on the drive. A little floater from the right side is good from Chance Crusoe. Here's Giles with it. Now over it comes to Bartley. Bartley with the left-handed dribble. Drives inside right at Cobb and scores. Cobb was there defensively, but Bartley just able to go through Cobb and score. Here's Cager on the attack again. Drive and dish to Crusoe inside. His shot no good. And the rebound taken by Bartley and will come back the other way. Here's Webb with the basketball. Now Bartley. He goes around to Kelly's screen, keeps the dribble alive. Now back to Webb. Webb right side. Dribbles left through the lane. Dishes out to Giles. Giles with a shot fake and a drive. And he scores. Here's William Penn back the other way is Cager with it. He gives it to Newman and wave off the three from Kamari Newman as he stepped out of bounds. Or Cager may have stepped out of bounds before delivering the pass. Either way, it's a turnover and it comes back with Mount Mercy. Here's Kelly, an open look from the wing. And Mount Mercy 
with seven straight, and they take their first lead at 7-5 to five as Cobb inside scores. A lot of contact. They play on, and we're tied at seven. Here's Basala, a quick release three. That one no good. And Kamari Newman with the rebound. Newman dishes ahead to Crusoe. And Crusoe's pass intended for Blaylock, but Basala was there to get a hand on it. Here's Basala a drive. Dishes off to Bartley. Blaylock was there to block it. And the tie-up gives it to Mount Mercy. Just about three minutes gone here in this one. We're tied at seven as Basala drives on Kajer. And Cobb helps side for the block. Shot clock down to two. Kelly doesn't give it off in time. Or is they going to call a foul? They're going to say a foul occurred before the shot clock violation? They are. So the foul on Cobb, and that gives Mount Mercy the possession and 20 seconds to work. Here's Bartley driving in, and a floater is good for Ryan Bartley. And it's a 9-7. Mount Mercy advantage. Here's Blaylock. Stepping up and knocking down a three. And that gives William Penn the lead back at 10 to 9. Basala. Out it comes to Webb. Here's Basala, a deep one from the top of the key. His first field goal. And it's 12 to 10. Here's Newman. A drive inside, a little step back floater for Kamari Newman. We're tied at 12. Cager with a near steal. It'll stay here. Watkins, Josh Watkins, and Frederick Jackson check in as Kamari Newman and Rayhan Cobb will get their first breather of the night. Substitutions as Laverius Duncan, a 6'8 senior from Converse, Texas, checks in. As does number 11. That's Brandon Jackson, a senior from Memphis, Tennessee. He's got the basketball now. Now Basala on the left wing. Here's Basala losing the dribble. And Cager on the run the other way. And Cager with the flush. Fourteen to twelve, William Penn back on top. Off the steal and flush from Q Cager. Here's Jackson out to Basala. His three no, and Watkins is there to clear for William Penn. Here's Crusoe. Bounce pass to Watkins. Shot not there. Here's Crusoe from the wing. His three short, and the rebound taken by Basala. He'll dribble into the front court. Hand off to Webb. Webb. Shot may have gotten partially blocked by Jackson. And we run the other way. Crusoe to Watkins in the corner. His three off the front of the iron. And the rebound taken by Mount Mercy. Here's a three in the corner from Bartley. That's good. 
Mount Mercy back the other way. Here's a lob, though, to Jackson as Watkins finds him on the weak side, and Jackson lays it in. Good flow to this one here early. Both offenses clicking thus far. Here's Duncan with the basketball. He'll fire it up from the elbow and connect. Crusoe on the attack. Now circles back to the corner and gives way to Cager out to the top of the key. Here's Watkins, left side. Dish to Blaylock, and Blaylock is fouled on the drive. It's going to be on Jackson. First free throw from Blaylock is good. Substitutions now as Brandon Doss and Malik Thomas check in for William Penn. Maneer Newton. And now Blaylock after the two free throws will get a breather as Maneer Newton checks in for the first time tonight. Eighteen seventeen. Thirteen thirty-five to play. Here's Webb out to Duncan. Duncan will fire a three. <laughs> Laverius Duncan steps outside the arc. The big fella from Texas. Here's Malik Thomas, a jumper. Both offenses. Going to work right now. Here's a shot no good. Loose underneath. And it'll be William Penn in possession. Anthony Horton Jr., a sophomore from Marion, Indiana, checks in. Here's Doss. Now Watkins gives it right back to him. Watkins, left wing, a three, no, a long two. A long two for Josh Watkins. Webb with it, seven on the shot clock. He'll rise up from the top. That one rattles out. Watkins tips the rebound into the hands of Malik Thomas. Here's Doss. Watkins, right side. That one off the back iron. And the rebound taken by the Mustangs. Here's Webb into the front court. They swing it around, a bad pass. But Jackson able to chase it down before going out of bounds. Here's Duncan with it, guarded by Jackson. Now, Horton Jr. with it. He'll kick it to Kelly in the corner, and Kelly knocks down his second three-pointer, and Mount Mercy retakes the lead at 23-22. Both offenses continuing to click. Here's Watkins spinning, dishing, Jackson finishing. Here's Duncan out top. He'll try another one. That one no good. And William Penn with the rebound. Here's Doss. Now Newton. Back to Doss. He'll rise up from the right wing and connect. Brandon Doss with a three. And Coach Jennings calls a quick 30-second timeout as William Penn. 27-23 the advantage. 10-58 to play. Here in the first half, we'll keep it right here. But William Penn, offense is flowing on both sides. Defense leaving a lot to be 
one on both sides. Ten fifty eight. William Penn on top by four. Here's Kelly, that one off the mark, but Basala there for the putback, but had it rim out. Had position, just couldn't finish. Here's Watkins back for William Penn. Nice drive and dish, and Jackson will go to the line as he had it stripped on the way up, but a foul was called. First free throw, no good. Jackson gets the second. This match is William Penn's largest lead at five. Horton Jr. Now into the ball game. It's Melvin Lee, a senior from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Basala's three from the corner. Off the mark, and William Penn. Watkins with it, and he'll give way to Doss. Here's Jackson inside. Had it spin out, gets his own rebound, though, and scores. Well, that's Jackson using his height to his advantage. Getting that offensive rebound. And now substitutions as Coach Henry, I believe, is going to come back with his starting five. But before that, we'll have our media timeout. We'll take a timeout as well. We'll set the lineups when we come back. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. Every morning before my family and I head out the door for the day, we tell each other to be the one. It's a challenge we make to each other to step up and show kindness when we have the opportunity. I'm Mike Sitzma, a funeral director here at Bates Funeral Chapel. I see families in some of their toughest times. However, I get to see our community at its best through the outpouring of love and support they show those affected by loss. I challenge you to join me and my family to look for opportunities daily to be the one. Crusoe, Blaylock, Cobb, Cager, and Newman out there for William Penn out of the timeout. For Mount, Mes Mount Mercy is Cobb missed the dunk. But Blaylock there to clean it up and will go to the line. For Mount Mercy, it's Basala, Bartley, Webb, Kelly, and Lee. Blaylock misses the first. But gets the second. 31-23. Here's Lee driving and a foul. Is that going to be on Cager? I believe it is.
Seven to shoot. Mount Mercy with it. Here's Basala, his baseline jumper, aired it out. Right into the hands of Rahan Cobb. Blaylock at the right elbow. A dribble step back and connects. Just used a dribble to get some space from Basala. And Blaylock now with eight points. Ten point lead for William Penn. Lee. Back out it comes to Kelly. Now Lee again with 10 to shoot. Lee in the corner. His three is, oh, a long two. A long two for Lee. Had a foot on the line. Good shot for him. As Newman connects on his first three of the game. And with that three, Kamari Newman. He's now the new record holder for three-pointers in a career here at William Penn. As that make was his 251st made three-pointer here at William Penn. So congratulations to Kamari Newman. The new three-point record holder as Crusoe with a steal on the inbounds as he just took it right away from Roy Sean Webb. Here's Duncan, a nice pass as he thread the needle to find Giles inside. Here's Blaylock, and he'll go to the line as he got clobbered by two different players. There's a pass and Crusoe's quick hands with a steal again. Here's Cager, one on two to a trailing Newman on the wing. Three no good, Watkins in there fighting for it. But Mount Mercy comes out of there with the basketball. Here's Duncan and a travel. Duncan shuffled the feet on the move. There's Watkins, top of the key, and he connects. Josh Watkins with the three. As that move inside by Basala is good, and Coach Jennings calls a quick timeout. We'll take one as well. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. At Clow Valve Company, being the premier place to work is part of our core vision, and this includes helping our local community be a premier place to live. Clow cares and is committed to creating a happier and healthier community by volunteering in local events and fundraisers by donating to nonprofit organizations, by leaving a better tomorrow than today. Clow is more. We are Clow Valve. Six fifteen to play here in the first quarter, first half. Excuse me. William Penn on top, forty-two to twenty-nine. Here's Blaylock. Just casually knocking down a three from the top of the key. He's got 12 to lead the way in this one as he 
continues his strong play. Coming off of a 27-point ball game on Saturday. Here's Bartley in the corner. His three is good. Ryan Bartley answers back with his. Newman, some dribbling, and he rattles home a three. 252 and counting for Kamari Newman. Basala will try to answer. That one spins out, and Newman with the rebound. Pass up ahead to Cager, but that pass put Cager into a bad spot. But Newman gets it back. Here's Watkins, a drive, and a dish to Cager, and Cager missed the bunny. He lost control of it on the way up. Cager just lost. Disgust with himself. Watkins will get a breather as Frederick Jackson into the ball game. So Coach Henry coming back with a little bit more size with Jackson and Blaylock in there together. Here's Duncan. He'll fire it up, left it short. Here's Crusoe, a little runner. That's no good. As William Penn getting a little careless. On the offensive end, leading by 16. Here's Bartley. Another three. That one. Off the mark. And Cager has that go off his hands. Kenny Clay in the ball game now for Coach Jennings, the senior from Davenport. Here's Clay a drive. Jackson there to alter the shot. Crusoe with the rebound. Got to be careful of the basketball. He does. Now he'll bounce a pass into Cager. Cager draws two and then dishes off to awaiting Jackson for the flush. Nice job there by Cager as he just backed the two defenders down, drew them to him, and they forgot all about Frederick Jackson on the weak side. He was there away of the nice pass from Cager. Now here's a steal by Cager. Cager bounces to a trailing Blaylock and one. And before the free throw, Coach Jennings calls a timeout. William Penn has all of a sudden exploded out to a 20-point lead, 52-32, 3.43 to play. We'll take a timeout. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. Why do more people love fairway meat? Because the fact is, every cut is a cut above, and nobody has the chops we do. We see food differently. The stakes are big and we always over deliver. That's why Fairway is the choice place to meet. Because at Fairway, we're meat masters and nothing matters more to us than making sure you get the highest quality meat in town. Fairway Meat and Grocery, everyone's favorite place to meet. Blaylock at the line. And he completes the end one. Fifteen points now for Blaylock here in the first half. It's a 21-point advantage for William Penn. Now 
as they have really clamped down on this end over the last six minutes of play and a turnover as Webb shuffled the feet. Webb a drive, shot no good. Offensive rebound, though, into the hands of Jackson. Here's Bartley, his three off the mark. Thomas got a hand on the rebound, and Blaylock chases it down in the corner. Here's Cager on the attack, left-handed layup. Spins out, and the rebound into the hands of Kenny Clay. Bartley inside, out it comes to the corner. That three off the mark. And William Penn running. Cager with the over the shoulder catch and finish. As Blaylock again With that ability to make the full court pass and just drop it in a bucket, as he did right there. And Cager, like a football receiver, caught it and went up and scored. Give the assist to Blaylock. Here's Basala, left wing three, and he curls it in. As Basala now with eight points, his second from long range. Doss lost it, but right into the hands of Manier Newton, who turns and scores as he went right at Bartley. Doss got away with it as he had it poked away, but in the chase for the loose ball, it found its way right into the waiting hands of Manier Newton. Here's Basala, a quick three, that one's short. Rebound loose. William Penn running again. Here's Doss, a bounce pass to a cutting Newton inside. And Maneer Newton with another bucket. Fifty-nine to thirty-five. Here's Bartley inside, and he scores off the find from Basala. Substitution as Javen Brown, the freshman from Waldorf, Maryland, going to check in. I don't know if he's going to get Blaylock or who, but minute, oh, four, minute four to play here in the first half. This one, all William Penn, 59-37. William Penn led this 30 to 23 at our media timeout. Since then, they have outscored the Mustangs 29 to 14. Brown does replace Blaylock, as it'll be Doss, Brown, Thomas, Newman, and Manier Newton. Here's Doss with the basketball to Kamari Newman. Newman, a step back three is no good. And Malik Thomas going to be whistled for the foul on the rebound. Thomas can't believe the call. Final minute here in the first half.
Here's a drive and a score by Horton Jr. He just went right at Brandon Doss and was able to score it inside. Here's Newman. Drove inside. They kick it out. Here's Brown. Brown. A little floater from the right side. No good. Loose underneath, and it's going to be Mount Mercy basketball. Boy, I thought that went off the leg of Bartley, but either way, shot clock turned off. And Coach Jennings, I'm sure, telling his guys, hold it. As they'll try to get the deficit below 20 here at the break. Ten seconds and counting as Horton goes to work. Here's Bartley, top of the key, back to Horton. He'll drive around. Denied by Malik Thomas, but a foul is going to be called. As Thomas met Horton Jr. at the rim. And on the denial, a foul is called on Malik Thomas. First free throw, no good. He misses the second. Blaylock with a rebound. Blaylock up ahead to Newman, and Newman unable to get a shot off as the clock expired. Good idea, but just not enough time. We go to the break. William Penn in control, 59 to 39. They lead Mount Mercy after 20 minutes of action. We'll take a timeout. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. Every morning before my family and I head out the door for the day, we tell each other to be the one. It's a challenge we make to each other to step up and show kindness when we have the opportunity. I'm Mike Sitzma, a funeral director here at Bates Funeral Chapel. I see families in some of their toughest times. However, I get to see our community at its best through the outpouring of love and support they show those affected by loss. I challenge you to join me and my family to look for opportunities daily to be the one. At Cloud Valve Company, being the premier place to work is part of our core vision, and this includes helping our local community be a premier place to live. Clow cares and is committed to creating a happier and healthier community. By volunteering in local events and fundraisers. By donating to nonprofit organizations. By leaving a better tomorrow than today. Clow is more. We are Clow Valve. Why do more people love fairway meat? Because the fact is, every cut is a cut above and nobody has the chops we do. We see food differently. The steaks are big, and we always over-deliver. That's why Fairway is the choice place to meet. Because at Fairway, we're meat masters, and nothing matters more to us than making sure you get the highest quality meat in town. Fairway Meat and Grocery, everyone's favorite place to meet. Hi, this is Michael, owner of the Wood Iron Grill in Oskaloosa on South 11th Street. Your home for chef-inspired cuisine. From the delectable food that we serve to our gracious hospitality, the Wood Iron Grill provides a warm atmosphere with panoramic views of emerald fairways and rolling greenery. We're proud to call Oskaloosa home and proud to be awarded the best burger in the state. If you're looking for extraordinary flavor and impeccable service, it doesn't get any better than the Wood Iron Grill. Check out our events and special calendar online or on Facebook. At Kinetic Edge Physical Therapy, we believe there's an athlete in all of us. Our bodies were made to move. Whether it's on the field or in your backyard, we know you'll feel better if you move better. Everyday tasks and activities can be made easier, and living without pain is possible. We're transforming lives and restoring hope through movement at Kinetic Edge. There's an athlete in all of us. Let us help bring out the athlete in you. Kinetic Edge Physical Therapy, seven Iowa locations, including Oskaloosa. Growing up on a small farm in Iowa, the main values my parents taught me were to work hard and to get better every day. 
My father used to say, don't lie, be honest, and do it right the first time. My name's Ross Kenobi, general manager and part owner at Craig Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Chevrolet and Buick. And I can assure you, the same values my parents taught me are the values you'll find when you do business with us. For more than 25 years, Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa has provided a unique shopping experience for all visitors. As a good neighbor pharmacy, their knowledgeable staff offers the trusted advice and personal attention you deserve. With a large selection of home decor, seasonal items, gifts, greeting cards, and so much more, you don't just shop at Mahaska Drug, you experience it. Experience Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa today. Locally owned, locally operated, locally loved. At Mahaska Health, our team is dedicated to caring for you through every season of life. Whether you are in need of a same-day appointment, preparing to expand your family, or about to undergo surgery with our excellent surgical staff, we are dedicated to helping you feel your best today and every day. Recognized as a top 100 critical access hospital, we are continually driven to enhance the health and well-being of the communities we serve. Mahaska Health. For nearly 40 years, Musco has specialized in the design and manufacture of sports and large area lighting solutions. From neighborhood ball fields to international speedways, Musco is committed to providing cost-effective lighting solutions and services you can rely on. For your budget, for the environment, Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Oskaloosa Vision Center's hometown doctors have strong roots in Oskaloosa and are dedicated to serving the community. We use state-of-the-art equipment to provide high-quality, professional eye care through comprehensive eye exams, medical care for eye infection and disease treatment, as well as emergency aid and pre- and post-operative care. With our large variety of prescription glasses, sunglasses, and contact lenses, we strive to meet the needs of all patients, from newborn to adult. Oskaloosa Vision Center. Come see us today. It's more than an education. It's more than a degree. William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Opportunity in a diverse student body. Opportunity in a staff that works with your budget. Opportunity in over 30 programs of study. Opportunity in a classroom where your voice is heard. Find your future and the opportunities waiting for you. Start your planning today at wmpenn.edu and see why William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Hi, this is Michael, owner of the Wood Iron Grill in Oskaloosa on South 11th Street, your home for chef-inspired cuisine. From the delectable food that we serve to our gracious hospitality, the Wood Iron Grill provides a warm atmosphere with panoramic views of emerald fairways and rolling greenery. We're proud to call Oskaloosa home and proud to be awarded the best burger in the state. If you're looking for extraordinary flavor and impeccable service, it doesn't get any better than the Wood Iron Grill. Check out our events and special calendar online or on Facebook. Every morning before my family and I head out the door for the day, we tell each other to be the one. It's a challenge we make to each other to step up and show kindness when we have the opportunity. I'm Mike Sitz, I'm a funeral director here at Bates Funeral Chapel. I see families in some of their toughest times. However, I get to see our community at its best through the outpouring of love and support they show those affected by loss. I challenge you to join me and my family to look for opportunities daily to be the one. At Clow Valve Company, being the premier place to work is part of our core vision, and this includes helping our local community be a premier place to live. Clow cares and is committed to creating a happier and healthier community. By volunteering in local events and fundraisers, by donating to nonprofit organizations, by leaving a better tomorrow than today. Clow is more. We are Clow Valve. Why do more people love fairway meat? Because the fact is, every cut is a cut above. 
and nobody has the chops we do. We see food differently. The stakes are big, and we always over-deliver. That's why Fairway is the choice place to meet. Because at Fairway, we're meat masters. And nothing matters more to us than making sure you get the highest quality meat in town. Fairway Meat and Grocery. Everyone's favorite place to meet. Hi, this is Michael, owner of the Wood Iron Grill in Oskaloosa on South 11th Street. Your home for chef-inspired cuisine. From the delectable food that we serve to our gracious hospitality, the Wood Iron Grill provides a warm atmosphere with panoramic views of emerald fairways and rolling greenery. We're proud to call Oskaloosa home and proud to be awarded the best burger in the state. If you're looking for extraordinary flavor and impeccable service, it doesn't get any better than the Wood Iron Grill. Check out our events and special calendar online or on Facebook. At Kinetic Edge Physical Therapy, we believe there's an athlete in all of us. Our bodies were made to move. Whether it's on the field or in your backyard, we know you'll feel better if you move better. Everyday tasks and activities can be made easier, and living without pain is possible. We're transforming lives and restoring hope through movement at Kinetic Edge. There's an athlete in all of us. Let us help bring out the athlete in you. Kinetic Edge Physical Therapy. Seven Iowa locations, including Oskaloosa. Growing up on a small farm in Iowa, the main values my parents taught me were to work hard and to get better every day. My father used to say, don't lie, be honest, and do it right the first time. My name's Ross Kenobi, general manager and part owner at Craig Ford Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram Chevrolet and Buick. And I can assure you, the same values my parents taught me are the values you'll find when you do business with us. For more than 25 years, Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa has provided a unique shopping experience for all visitors. As a good neighbor pharmacy, their knowledgeable staff offers the trusted advice and personal attention you deserve. With a large selection of home decor, seasonal items, gifts, greeting cards, and so much more, you don't just shop at Mahaska Drug, you experience it. Experience Mahaska Drug in Oskaloosa today. Locally owned, locally operated, locally loved. At Mahaska Health, our team is dedicated to caring for you through every season of life. Whether you are in need of a same-day appointment, preparing to expand your family, or about to undergo surgery with our excellent surgical staff, we are dedicated to helping you feel your best today and every day. Recognized as a top 100 critical access hospital, we are continually driven to enhance the health and well-being of the communities we serve. Mahaska Health. For nearly 40 years, Musco has specialized in the design and manufacture of sports and large area lighting solutions. From neighborhood ball fields to international speedways, Musco is committed to providing cost-effective lighting solutions and services you can rely on. For your budget, for the environment, Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Oskaloosa Vision Center's hometown doctors have strong roots in Oskaloosa and are dedicated to serving the community. We use state-of-the-art equipment to provide high-quality, professional eye care through comprehensive eye exams, medical care for eye infection and disease treatment, as well as emergency aid and pre- and post-operative care. With our large variety of prescription glasses, sunglasses, and contact lenses, we strive to meet the needs of all patients, from newborn to adult. Oskaloosa Vision Center. Come see us today. It's more than an education. It's more than a degree. William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Opportunity in a diverse student body. Opportunity in a staff that works with your budget. Opportunity in over 30 programs of study. Opportunity in a classroom where your voice is heard. Find your future and the opportunities waiting for you. Start your planning today at wmpenn.edu and see why William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Welcome back inside Penn Gymnasium. Kylie Broadway with you. 59-39. William Penn on top of Mount Mercy here at the break. As in that first half, William Penn shoots 66% from the floor. 54% from beyond the arc. They were led by Kavion Blaylock. 15 points in that first half to go along with four rebounds. 
balanced attack for William Penn. They got nine off the bench from Frederick Jackson, eight from Kamari Newman, seven from Q Cager, five from Josh Watkins, four from Chance Crusoe, three from Brandon Doss, four from Manier Newton, and two apiece from Malik Thomas and Rayhan Cobb. For Mount Mercy, they were led by Ryan Bartley. He had 12 points on five of eight shooting. As a team, they shoot 44% from the floor, 37% from three. Eight points from Bailey Basala, well below his season average of 19. Six points from Tyler Kelly. Five from Lavaris Duncan. Four from Chris Giles. And two apiece from Melvin Lee and Anthony Horton Jr. William Penn winning the rebounding battle 19 to 11. They've turned it over five times. They've turned Mount Mercy over nine times. We had four ties, 12 lead changes, most of those coming in the first 10 minutes of action because William Penn took that lead at the media timeout and have not looked back since as they've got a 20-point lead here at the break. Cobb with the basketball for William Penn. As we start the second half, it's Cager. And Crusoe had a foot on the sideline when he caught it right in front of Coach Henry. And Coach Henry oh, with a wry smile and looked down as if to say, wait a minute, how did I not see that? You can have those moments and then kind of smile and laugh about them when, uh, when you're up 20 midway through a basketball game. Here's Webb inside, and he'll force up a shot and draw a foul on Crusoe. Webb at the line, he'll get two. That's the first foul on Crusoe. Throw no good, and Cobb corrals the rebound. Blaylock into the front court. A little dribble to his left, that three off the mark. And the rebound into the hands of the Mustangs. Here's Webb into the front court, driving in. Lets his defender fly by, but misses the shot attempt. And Cobb clears it. Here's Crusoe, a little stop and go move. Left side jumper is off the mark. Cobb, though, inside fighting for an offensive rebound, but can't finish. Put it up too strong off the glass. Here's Bartley inside. His shot is good as he got some space from Newman and was able to score it from in close. So three straight to start the half for William Penn. Now a quick shot from Kamari Newman. Here's Basala a drive, and he throws it away. He thought he had Bartley cutting to the basket, but Bartley was standing on the baseline, didn't move towards the basket in the pass. Out of reach. And Coach Henry calls a quick timeout as he is not happy with what he has seen out of the break here by his squad. 59-42, the score. Coach Henry with a few words for his group.
William Penn basketball out of the timeout. Here's Kamari Newman. A drive. Shot up. And he'll get an and one opportunity. Coach Henry much happier after that execution and the work of the offense. And Newman completes the three-point play. Here's Basala out to Webb. His three is no good. But the rebound and tip home is good from Chris Giles. And Cager unhappy with the call. Free throw from Giles is good. As Newman into the front court. Around the screen and a dangerous pass. Tipped away, still loose. And Crusoe tried to save it, but it's out of bounds. Hey. 62-45. If you're Mount Mercy, there's still a lot of basketball to be played. And you've got plenty of time to get back in this. Trailing by 17. If you're William Penn, you've also got to realize there's a lot of basketball yet to play. And you cannot let up. And now we got a technical foul on Q Cager. As he was unhappy with that last foul call and continued to talk. And finally, the official had enough. Free throw from Basala is good. And just like that, it's a 15 point game. Giles, or excuse me, that's Webb inside, missing, and Crusoe with the rebound. Watkins is in for Cager now. Here's Blaylock with the finish off the nice find from Crusoe off the mini break. Tough turnaround by Bartley that's good as he fading away from the baseline was able to get it to go. And here's Newman forcing one up in a late whistle. Free throws good. Sixty six forty nine Newman now with thirteen points. That's second on the team behind Blaylock's seventeen. That one no good. Here's Watkins. A jumper from the baseline is off the mark. Cobb tried to tip the rebound to himself. And here's Basala getting inside as he got around Blaylock for the finish. Mount Mercy hanging around here in the early moments of the second half. Here's Newman, a drive inside and a foul. 
And he will go right back to the free throw line. Second one is good. Newman a perfect four for four from the free throw line here in the second half. William Penn lead is 17. Here's Basala. Now Duncan with the basketball. Lavaris Duncan, the senior from Converse, Texas. He provided an early spark off the bench for Mount Mercy. As Giles got away with a travel. Now Mount Mercy still with the basketball and a shot clock violation as his desperation heave did not draw iron. Shot fake and a drive, no contact or no call, but Cobb is there for the follow flush. Just his second field goal for Rahan Cobb. Been a quiet night for him thus far as Duncan answers back for Mount Mercy. Here's Newman, a drive, reverse layup is good for Kamari Newman. Is he, the defense extended, knowing that he's lethal from outside. He's taking advantage and putting it on the floor and getting to the basket as he did right there. Here's Basala, a three from the corner. Watkins clears for William Penn. Here's Crusoe on the attack right side. Tries to feed it to Blaylock, but Blaylock lost control of it. Here's Basala running the other way, and a foul. It's going to be whistled on Rayhan Cobb. First free throw from Basala is good. Blaylock, nice feed to a cutting Crusoe, extra pass to awaiting Rayhan Cobb. Give the assist to Crusoe. He had an easy layup, but the extra pass gives Cobb the finish and Crusoe the assist. Here's Cobb with a block on the other end, but a foul as he got Duncan with the body. Free throw, good. Frederick Jackson going to check in for Rayhan Cobb. Second free throw from Duncan is pure. 74-57, just under 14 minutes to play here in the ball game. William Penn in control, but Mount Mercy trying to hang around here in the early portion of the second half. They've got to within as, as close as 15 as Crusoe misses that layup. And now going to be whistled for a foul as he was frustrated from the miss. Tried to get a steal on the other side and committed the foul.
There's a pass and a good poke away. Good read defensively by Watkins. On the other end, Watkins able to finish with a little step through drive after he initiated the break with a poke away. Here's Duncan inside. Little baby hook off the mark. Poked out of bounds momentarily by Jackson, but it'll stay William Penn possession. Kamari Newman going to get a breather as Malik Thomas checks in. Brandon Doss also checks in in favor of Chance Crusoe. Here's Thomas. Now Watkins straight on three from the top. No good. Good look by Watkins. Now there's a pass and a steal. Is that one they tried to get Corey or Cole Hrubes on the run out, but Blaylock and Watkins both were there for the intercept. Here's Malik Thomas in the corner. Blaylock, offensive rebound, and a score. Penn running again. The lead is 21. Doss. Jackson out to set a screen. Here's Watkins on the left side. He'll rise up and curl home a three. Josh Watkins. Bartley was there, but caught with his hands down. And Watkins rose up. And Coach Jennings is going to call a timeout. William Penn has pushed the lead to 24. 81-57 with 12.04 to play. We'll take a timeout. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. Hi, this is Michael, owner of the Wood Iron Grill in Oskaloosa on South 11th Street, your home for chef-inspired cuisine. From the delectable food that we serve to our gracious hospitality, the Wood Iron Grill provides a warm atmosphere with panoramic views of emerald fairways and rolling greenery. We're proud to call Oskaloosa home and proud to be awarded the best burger in the state. If you're looking for extraordinary flavor and impeccable service, it doesn't get any better than the Wood Iron Grill. Check out our events and special calendar online or on Facebook. Eighty-one fifty-seven out of the timeout. Mount Mercy in possession. William Penn, though, in control of this one. Again, Mount Mercy's... Tried to make a couple of runs here in the second half. They've got to as close as 15, but William Penn has held them at bay and not allowed them to get closer. Here's Doss on the drive. Doss at the line, he'll get two. First one, no good. Four points for Brandon Doss. He had a three in the first half. And it's a 25-point game, William Penn. 11 and a half to play. William Penn goes on the road for their next two. as they'll be on the road this weekend down in Olathe, Kansas, taking on Mid-American Nazarene. As Doss with the left-handed layup off the drive. But William Penn will be in Olathe taking on Mid-American Nazarene on Saturday. And then next Wednesday, a week from tonight, they'll be on the road at Park before returning home a week from Saturday, February 12th, to host Graceland. Well, there's a defensive breakdown as Tyler Kelly with the flush. I want to take this time to congratulate Mid-America Nazarene men's head coach Rocky Lamar as he got win number 800 in his career last week, Saturday. Quite an accomplishment for Coach Lamar. So congratulations to him. That three from Basala 
no good, and we'll come back the other way. Here's Watkins, a pull-up jumper. It's no good, but Blaylock is there. Tried to catch it and put it back in all in one motion, but had it roll off the side of the rim. As there's a three from the corner. Made by Jackson. Doss, he'll step into a three. That one's short. As Basala, outlet pass, but Doss was there to take it away. Here's Blaylock inside, and he scores as he just went right over top of Kelly. Blaylock now with 21. Here's a three from the corner. That's good from Melvin Lee. And with 9.24 to play, 86-65 is our score. And we'll take a timeout as well. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. It's more than an education. It's more than a degree. William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Opportunity in a diverse student body. Opportunity in a staff that works with your budget. Opportunity in over 30 programs of study. Opportunity in a classroom where your voice is heard. Find your future and the opportunities waiting for you. Start your planning today at wmpen.edu and see why William Penn University is alive with opportunity. Brand new five for William Penn out of the timeout. As Coach Henry comes back with Q Cager, Chance Crusoe, Kamari Newman, Rayhan Cobb, and Manier Newton. Rousseau has his pocket picked in the corner as he tried to make a drive, but Melvin Lee was there for the takeaway. Now, Crusoe tries to return the favor, picked his pocket, tried to save it off the leg of Lee, and somehow that ball stayed in play, and now Lee drives, and we'll get an and one opportunity. And before the free throw, now we will have our media timeout. 86-67, 8.48 to play. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. Oskaloosa Vision Center's hometown doctors have strong roots in Oskaloosa and are dedicated to serving the community. We use state-of-the-art equipment to provide high-quality, professional eye care through comprehensive eye exams, medical care for eye infection and disease treatment, as well as emergency aid and pre- and post-operative care. With our large variety of prescription glasses, sunglasses, and contact lenses, we strive to meet the needs of all patients, from newborn to adult. Oskaloosa Vision Center. Come see us today. Free throws good by Melvin Lee. He completes the three point play. 18 point game. William Penn just holding Mount Mercy at bay is Newman. The jumper from the left side falls. Here's Jackson from the right wing, and he connects. Brandon Jackson, from senior from Memphis, Tennessee. His second three-point field goal. As Mount Mercy tries to make one final run here with 8.09 to play. They're within 17. Brandon, help! 
Here's Crusoe inside off the loose ball scrum, and somehow Crusoe got the basketball and is able to score. the line. Free throws good. Gets two. He's got ten now. He's in the double figures. 90 to 73. Seven and a half to play. Here's Cobb inside. He's double teamed. Looking. Now has it poked away. But I don't know if it was Kelly or Lee, but one of them got a hand on it. And knocked it away from Cobb. And now the layup from Jackson is good. Bad pass and a turnover, but Mount Mercy gives it right back. And now Cobb is fouled in the backcourt. Approach the seven minute mark. 15 point game, 90 to 75. Good job here by Mount Mercy with a run, and they're looking for more as Lee into the front court. Here's a drive and a kick to Basala on the wing. Boy, had a good look at it, just couldn't get it to go down. Over the last six minutes, Mount Mercy has outscored William Penn 18 to nine. to trim what was a 24-point lead. Here's Cager, a drive and kick. Crusoe's three from the top is good. Assist Q Cager. Here's Jackson in the corner, he's open. That one, no good. Cobb corrals the rebound. Here's Crusoe, a drive, and he gets the roll as he just blew by Kenny Clay. Here's Jackson. Now Basala. Back to Jackson. He'll fire it up and connect. And after the make, We've got a timeout by Coach Jennings, 95 to 78. Mount Mercy trying to hang around and keep this interesting. We've got five and a half to play. Timeout on the floor. You're watching William Penn Basketball on the Statesman Sports Network. For nearly 40 years, Musco has specialized in the design and manufacture of sports and large area lighting solutions. From neighborhood ball fields, to international speedways. Musco is committed to providing cost-effective lighting solutions and services you can rely on. For your budget, for the environment, Musco Lighting, we make it happen. Cager driving through traffic, and they're going to call him for a travel. And that will give it back to Mount Mercy. Trailing by 17, 520 to play. Does Mount Mercy have one final push? 
There's a block and a save by Blaylock. But the outlet pass is picked off by Basala. But he's unable to connect. Clock issue or I think there's a question with the score, but We're good. 95-78, Cager at the line. Free throw no good, but Blaylock taps it out, and Cager tried to save it, but stepped out of bounds. And we'll go back the other way. Here's a drive and a finish by Melvin Lee. Well, Mount Mercy not going away as Cager on the attack has it blocked and Basala out of there with it. Here's Jackson, the trailer. That three no good. And Crusoe with the rebound. He'll run into the front court. Finds a trailing Newman. His three, good. Well, that's only his third three of the ball game. But if you, he can catch it in rhythm and line it up, you're not going to miss many of those. Here's a wild shot attempt by Clay that's out of bounds. Crusoe and Cobb check out. Malik Thomas. And who did I miss? Malik Thomas in along with, oh, I'm sorry, Crusoe's still in the ball game. Malik Thomas checked in for Cobb, and that was it. And Thomas immediately with the offensive rebound finishes inside. And that brings William Penn to the 100-point mark, which means... On Saturday, February 12th, when Graceland is in town, the next home game for William Penn, Hot Dogs will be a lovely 50 cent apiece as Cager scores. That last three by Mount Mercy was from Cole Rubes, a freshman from Cedar Rapids, and now a turnover. Stay with us after the conclusion of this one as we'll have our post-game chat with Coach Henry. And I'm sure he'll bring out a couple of players as well for us to chat with. And we'll get their thoughts on tonight's game and life as number one in the NAIA. William Penn's game at Mid-America on Saturday will be the first and only regular season meeting with Mid-America Nazarene as those two teams have not played yet. Again, with the, with the two divisions within the conference, you play your teams in your division twice, and the teams in the opposite division you play once, Mid-America Nazarene in the South Division, so... Only once this year, and after playing him here in Oski last year, you go down to Olathe this year. And 
Mid American Nazarene, not a, I mean, not a, they've had a solid year, but not not the type of year that they're used to. They're coming into action tonight. They were twelve and they're twelve and eleven overall, seven and six in conference play. They currently sit in a five-way tie for second place in the South Division. Coming into action tonight, Evangel led the South Division with an eight, eight and five record. And then the tie for second between Baker, Benedictine, Central Methodist, Mid-American Nazarene, and Park, all at seven and six in conference play coming into action tonight. On the north side, William Penn coming into action tonight. 12-1 in conference. They've got a four-game lead over Mount Mercy, who came into action tonight at 8-5. Grandview a game back of them at 7-6. And And then Clark at 6-7. Peru State 5-8. And And Culver Stockton 4-9. Graceland at 3 and 10. Two and a half to play in this one. William Penn. As here's Javen Brown. Not able to connect, but William Penn with the win tonight. We'll go to 13 and 1 in conference play. 22 and 1 overall. Mount Mercy will fall to 8 and 6 in conference, 15 and 9. And what this will do is it'll give William Penn It'll clinch the North Division for William Penn, or it'll it will clinch a tie in the North Division because after when this game goes final, William Penn will have a five-game lead over Mount Mercy, who is in second place in the conference. If Grandview wins tonight, they would also be at eight and six. But William Penn would have the tiebreakers over both of those teams in head-to-head matchups, but. You would clinch with just five regular season games remaining after tonight. You would have the North Division clinched. And then you are one game away from clinching the outright title as Javen Brown with the exclamation point here tonight. As Doss threw it off the backboard and Javen Brown with the finish. And now we're going to have a technical because students on the opposite side of the gym after the dunk came onto the court. And that's an automatic technical. That's a team technical on William Penn. Rubis shoots the free throw. Take away the technical. That uh, That's your exclamation point as Doss threw it off the backboard and Brown, the freshman from Maryland, with the emphatic two-handed finish. As there's a block by Rosenberg. Here's Newton inside, lost it on the way up. Rebound, though, 
And that lob swatted away by Rubis. But as I was saying when that alley-oop dunk occurred, is William Penn with the win. They've got the North Division wrapped up via the tiebreaker over the two second-place teams in head-to-head -head matchups as Brown connects. But with the win tonight, they now are just needing one more win. Or no, two more wins, excuse me. In their final five games, no matter what anybody else does, if William Penn can win two of their final five, they will win the Heart of America Conference Championship outright here in the regular season. Evangel right now coming into action tonight, eight and five in conference. Um, their game with Baker tonight, I believe, got postponed until tomorrow due to weather. But here's a drive and a finish. And now we've got a double technical on a couple of players as Emotion's getting the best of things. The foul is on Rosenberg. And then we've got a technical foul, I believe, on Doss for William Penn and I got the technical foul on Doss. Who, who got the technical foul for William Penn? Was it? I believe it was Melvin Lee and now Lee's at the line shooting the and one free throw from the regular foul. The double technicals won't result in any free throws. 15, 15, 15. 28 seconds, shot clock turned off. Doss with it. And now we got another whistle and that's gonna be an offensive foul as lowering the shoulder was Leighton Owens. And the final 14 seconds. We'll tick away in this one as Rubis has it. I don't even know if Mount Mercy is going to shoot it. Doesn't look like it as the finals. Well, now Lee will fire it up. And it's good at the buzzer. He banks it home. But all that does is make the final number a little more respectable. 112.94 is the final. William Penn wins it by 18 here tonight. This was a back and forth contest through the first 10 minutes. William Penn took a seven point lead into the media timeout at 9.46 to play in the first half. And they promptly after the media timeout, the remainder, the remainder of that first half, they outscored Mount Mercy 29 to 16. They, that 20-point halftime lead, they maintained it the entire second half. Mount Mercy got as close as 15 on multiple occasions here in the second half, but William Penn had the answer at every, every time they needed it, and they win it here by 18 in the end, 112 to 94. As we await some final stats, good to see the William Penn men's volleyball team out on the court taking part in the victory bell ringing celebration.
head coach Luke Bentley has that group rolling right now. Upset win after upset win here over the last couple of weeks. Their most recent victory the other night, taking down number four, the Pirates of Park, in a five-set thriller the other night here in Oskaloosa. And, the con and, you know, big wins, but the competition only gets better and tougher as number one Grandview comes to town next week. I believe it's Tuesday night here in Oskaloosa. But this William Penn men's volleyball team upsetting and shocking top-rated teams left and right here as of late. And Coach Luke Bentley and this squad will look to pull off another stunner next week when Grandview comes to Oskaloosa. Let's take a look at some final stats for this contest while we wait for Coach Henry. William Penn. Well, let's go through Mount Mercy's stats first. They were led in scoring by Ryan Bartley. He had 16 points. Bailey Basala, 14 points, five below his season average. Melvin Lee came off the bench to lead this team with 19. He was six of six from the floor, two of two from three. And 11 points for Brandon Jackson. Nine points off the bench for Lavaris Duncan, five for Anthony Horton Jr., four for Cole Rubis, eight for Tyler Kelly, seven for Chris Giles, and one for Roy Sean Webb. For the game, Mount Mercy shoots 47% from the floor, 37% from three, and 75% from the free throw line. They turn it over 16 times. They have 18 assists on 33 made baskets. William Penn, they were led by Kamari Newman. Had a quiet, I say quiet, and kind of chuckle, a quiet 24 points for Kamari Newman. He was 8 of 13 from the floor, 3 of 7 from 3, and 5 of 5 at the free throw line. 22 points for Kavion Blaylock to go along with 7 rebounds and 2 assists. Also in double figures, Chance Crusoe, 5 of 11. For 11 points, he also had 6 rebounds and 5 assists and 2 steals. And Josh Watkins, the fourth player in double figures tonight, as he gets 10 off the bench for William Penn. And we'll go through the remainder of the stats when we finish up with Coach Henry. Coach, always glad to have you with us. And, uh, you know, things, you know, wasn't necessarily <laughs> the prettiest finish to the game, but I thought the no. first 20 minutes looked like the number one team in the country. Yeah, I mean, uh, I can be mad at him all I want about not finishing well or not cleaning it up late, but when you win by 18 versus a conference school who's in second place right behind you, I mean, in hindsight, what are you really complaining about? <laughs> you know, I mean, we always have that phrase, by one or 100, well, tonight it's 18, so I can't complain. Um, I would have liked to have had a cleaner victory um, specifically – Hey, what's up, man? Coach Linhart. Yeah. Uh, I would have liked to have had a cleaner victory um, and, you know, pushed it out to 30 or 40. I had a – I got to be honest with you, and Doss is sitting here too. I, I, I'm, the reason I'm, I'm, I'm upset, and I can't – again, I, I, for the third time, I can't be upset with an 18-point victory and 112 <laughs> points. I wanted to get some more kids in the game earlier. Yep. I wanted to play uh, some other kids – and, you know, they can say it's all good, we won, don't matter. It matters. Yep. You know, and I wanted to get them in earlier uh, and more. Um, and that's why I was getting so upset was because, dude, come on, man, get your brothers in the damn game. Um, so that's my frustration. But I know here in about ten minutes it, I'll be over it <laughs> because I'm going to look at the stats and it's going to say 112 to 94. Really surprised. Uh, at Mount Mercy's philosophy to run with us. Right. Um, but Not that's something what, they normally do. No, no, no. And that's something he did up there, too, um, which I, you know, okay, I, I'm cool with that because we got enough horses uh, to, to run all day. Um, but, yeah, all wins are good wins. I just, I'm a little upset that we didn't get more kids in the game and, and uh, a little, not just more in the game, but earlier. Uh, yeah. I wanted I wanted Shaven Brown, who's a heck of a, or Javen Brown, excuse me, who's a heck of a player, to get in way earlier than he did. I um, mean, he put on a show. He I mean, Doss is off the backboard <laughs> pass to him, 
is legendary. We got a technical from our crowd running onto the court, too. I got to address that, um, but can't have that. Uh, yeah. But, uh, no, it's, it's a good win. And uh, well, if you'd have told me uh, back on September 26th when we started practice that there would be an ice cold night where you were 22 and 1 and 13 and 1 in league i'd have definitely taken it so yeah, especially coming off of a week in which you spent about what 20 hours on the road oh last week? gosh last <laughs> week was the gauntlet and it's coming back up cuz now we got to go to uh, you know liberty missouri for a, for a mid am and it's rocky lamar night yep Who's um, just celebrating yeah, his 800th win. 800 wins, and he's retiring, and they're bringing all the former players back, so I'm sure that'll be a nice environment. Uh, and then we got to go to Park on Wednesday. So back-to-back crazy travel. Uh, what people don't always realize is these kids go to class. Yeah, right. You know, we got, we got home the other night from Peru, Nebraska, on a Wednesday night. It was 2.25 in the morning. Uh, and then we had to go to... What was the other Springfield. one? Springfield. Yeah, Springfield. <laughs> Six and a half hours. You got to leave a day we early. Left on, we, yeah, we left on Friday yeah. morning. So it was crazy, and this next trips are going to be crazy too. But once we get through them, I'm thinking that the entire conference tournament will be here if we get one more win. One more win actually clinches the league. Uh, we thought today we were going to clinch uh, at least a share uh, because Baker's playing Evangel. Me and you spoke about yep. this off air. Baker and Evangel postponed till tomorrow. It's at Baker. If Baker beats Evangel, then we clinch the league with our win today, knocking Mount Mercy out of the hunt because Mount Mercy and Evangel are the two closest teams to right. us. So we actually might clinch a conference championship tomorrow uh, evening, um, you know, which will be pretty cool because then hopefully we can clinch it outright at home on senior night, which will be Graceland. And those of you who are listening – who know our tradition of senior night, It's we're changing it for the first time this year in 22 years. It's going to be after our game. It's normally okay. at halftime of the girls game where I cry and, and do all that the speeches stuff and get all <laughs> sappy. But we're going to move it. We're going to start a new tradition and have it after the game, our actual game. Now you're, not even, gonna, you're not even going to be on a clock then now. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, why, that's why I'm doing it because we have eight seniors counting uh, Coach Dylan Stites. There's eight of them, and I don't know how I could do it. Also, we'll cut the nets, then do senior night, which gotcha. it's going to okay. make it longer. Uh, hopefully, we're cutting nets. Right, right. But yep. that's the plan. And here's Brandon Doss. Yep. Played a great game tonight. Uh, kid who's really paid his dues this year. He practices hard every day. It's not easy to be Chance Caruso and Q Cager's backup, and he's done it well. Bided his time and stay at a great game, and I want to put him on. Yeah. Um, introduction to Brandon Doss. Perfect. Thanks, Coach. Yeah, not a bad line for – we'll get Brandon on here. and You know, Brandon, I'm just looking at stats. Not a bad line for you tonight. You know, in 12 minutes, you score six points. You grab three rebounds. You, you get six assists, two steals, no turnovers. Oh, that's no, not a that's not a no bad turnover, twelve. That's no not turnovers. a bad – it doesn't say any of those. So that, that's not a bad 12 minutes of action. Okay, okay, okay. Talk about, uh, you know, what your, you know, your role on this team as a backup point guard. I mean, obviously, you've got some guys that, that are in front of you in Crusoe and, and Cager, and that's not to say that, that they're better than you. They're just in front of you. But, uh, you know, you obviously have a role on this team uh, off the bench and, you know, your mindset when you come into ball games. Um, well, first chance and Q, they, they taught me so much. Like, just them being here and being coached under Coach Henry, like, they tell me every day how – how to like fit into the program and like when when it come to games i just want to come in and bring energy a lot of energy especially bench points help win a lot of games especially us being number one and what 22 and one and 13 and one in the conference like the bench points help a lot like a lot of people don't realize that so i just try to do whatever is needed when i get in the game for however long whether it's one minute or i play 20 minutes i just try to i want to win Talk about what you saw on that uh, fast break late in the ball game where you and then jave and teamed up <laughs> well well, on defense, he came, and I tipped it to him, and he stole the ball. He threw it up. And while I was dribbling, the defender was coming, and all I heard out of all the screams, I just heard throw it off the backboard. <laughs> so I just threw it, I threw, threw it off the backboard. Like, we was already up, so I just threw it off. the. He, I turned around. Like, the defender jumped. He just went over top of him and dunked it. I was like, man. You're going to have to talk to some of your fellow students, though, to, to make sure they stay off the court when stuff yeah, like that Yeah, I don't that know. What that, was, that was wild. <laughs> that was wild. I don't know what that was about. Um, talk about, you know, just – 
Coach Henry, we talked about it with Coach Henry a little bit. You know, just the, the week that you guys had, you, the, the rankings come out early last week. You're the new number one team. Mm-hmm. You have to go down to Peru State, always a tough place to play, a long road trip. Then you have to follow that up with, a, with an even longer road trip down to Evangel, who's a, who's a team that's on the cusp of the top 25. Just talk about, you know, everything that was on your plate last week and then, you know, almost 20 hours on the road, but be able to come out last week with two great, two big wins on the road. I think that goes into our depth in the roster, our experience in the roster, how many seniors we have. Like, they've done this multiple, multiple seasons. So, I think, and just us being on the road a long time, we only got each other. So, we just around each other so the chemistry builds up more, the camaraderie. So, I just feel like in tough situations, the Evangel game was a tough game too. So, I like, nope. we don't had a lot of close games this year. And I feel like just our chemistry together helps us get through all those. Like, as long as we leave with a win. We good. Well, you got another win tonight. You're 22 and one on the year, and uh, now you know a couple days before hitting the road again on Saturday down to Olathe to take on Mid American Nazarene, who, as Coach Hendricks said, probably going to be a pretty uh, electric environment. As Coach Lamar, they're celebrating his 800th win. Yeah. He's retiring at the end of this year, so I know there's going to be some alumni in the house. But uh, I'm sure you guys are looking forward to the opportunity. I'm sure. Yeah, we coming. coming. Brandon Doss, thanks for your time, man. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. it. Congrats on the win. Congrats on a great game for you as well. Brandon Doss. We talked about Brandon, six points, uh, six assists, three rebounds, two steals, no turns in 12 minutes. Um, we went through double-figure scores for William Penn. We'll go through the rest. Rayhan Cobb had six points and seven rebounds. Q Cager, nine points, five assists in 24 minutes. Nine points for Frederick Jackson off the bench, all of those in the first half. Javen Brown with five points late, including the uh, two-handed flush. Off the backboard lob from Brandon Doss. Two points for Daniel Rosenberg, four for Manier Newton, six for Brandon, or Brandon Doss with six, and Malik Thomas with four. William Penn shoots 59% for the game, 46% from three, and 70% from the free throw line. They out rebound Mount Mercy 44 to 24, a 10 4 advantage on the offensive glass. William Penn led it by as many as 27. In the end, they win it by 18, 112 to 94, the final. And with the win, they improved to 22-2 and on the year, 14-1 and in conference, or 13-1, and excuse me, in conference play. Our next broadcast of William Penn Basketball will be a week from this Saturday, February 12th, when Graceland comes to town. We'll have both games for you on that Saturday. Women, I think, believe, I believe, tip at two with the men to follow at four. Until then, this is Kylie Broadway. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast of William Penn Basketball. We will talk to you again on February 12th. Until then, so long, everybody. Make sure you're keeping up with William Penn Athletics on social media so that you guys can keep up with stats, highlights, and make sure you know what to look forward to when it comes to Statesman Athletics.